Water TV. This is Jimmy Yu, and today's episode is titled Aw Shucks. We're going to show you how to shuck an oyster, how to eat an oyster, and tell you why ours are so much fresher than everyone else's. All right, now I'm going to take a little time here to show you how we shuck oysters and why our oysters and clams are so much better than anyone else. Number one, we buy all of our oysters and clams directly from the man that grows them. We've been buying them for 10 years. Uh, he ships them to us every week. He actually doesn't even harvest the oysters and clams until we place our order. We get them 24 hours later, and most people have to order through a distributor who orders from the farm, and ours are better from that perspective. Number two, we shuck everyone to order, visually inspect everyone to make sure it's still alive when we shuck it. So, I say, what the shuck? Let's, let's go ahead and shuck one, okay? Very simple process to shuck an oyster. An oyster is basically two shells, a top shell, which is flat, and a bottom shell, which is slightly cupped. The oyster's held together by a hinge at the back and, a, and an abductor muscle, which holds it right in the middle. So the key is to pop the hinge, slide the knife in, cut the little muscle, without breaking the interior pocket of the oyster, we call that a scrambled oyster or a scrambled egg, which the beauty of an oyster is it intact when you eat it. So let me go ahead and show you how we pop this oyster. What we do is we use a little towel here to uh, protect our hand. If you, if you shuck correctly, it's not dangerous, but beginners tend to apply too much pressure, and if the knife slips, it might go into their hand. So anyway, the, the hinge is right here. You just put your hand in, you, you pop that hinge. Once that hinge is popped, then you can slide the knife in and pop that muscle. Look at that oyster, isn't that beautiful? This one's grown by Glenn Schreiber at the Schreiber Shellfish Farm up in, outside of Shelton, Washington. Next thing you do is you slide your knife in from the front and you cut the abductor muscle from the bottom. You've already cut it from the top, so uh, you've left the, the, the pocket of the oyster intact. This little rim on the outside we call the mantle and the thing's ready to eat now. Boy, that's, look at how good that looks. I'm gonna put that right here on ice. All right, enough about what I think about oysters. I'm gonna introduce you to Mark, our master oyster shucker. Hi guys, welcome to the Oyster Bar at Blue Water Grill. If you guys don't know anything about oysters, they're a uh, bivalve mollusk. They, uh, they're a filter feeder. They can pump up to 25 gallons a day of water. Um, they feed on little plankton. Uh, for you women out there, uh, roughly 12 oysters is only roughly about 100 calories. Women love that fact. In the first three years, um, oysters are strictly female, and then after their fourth year or so, they can switch back and forth between male and female, and that's versatility right there. The best thing about oysters, of course, is eating them, but it's very important to enjoy some nice wine or perhaps a cold beer, or shake up a nice cold vodka martini. We've got Owen here, and he's gonna show us how to shake up the perfect martini that we can enjoy with our oysters. Take it away, Owen. First of all, ice in the shaker. Kettle one straight up. It's around about a nine or 10 count of four. Let me shake it up. This is a dry martini. Otherwise, you use a dry vermouth makes a little wet. Shake it up until it gets. You see the ice on the outside. Right, a nice chilled martini glass. Pour it in, trapping the ice, and this is called a martini up. Then we're going to have two olives stuffed with blue cheese. Give it a spike. Put that on the side. There you are, so your kettle one martini shake and not stir it, two olives stuffed with blue cheese. Enjoy. A thing of beauty, thank you, sir. No wonder I love this job. So tonight we're going to be looking at uh, 
six varieties of oysters. Right here we have our first oyster that's up. It's the classic oyster. It's from Blue Point, Long Island. It's the favorite oyster of people from the East Coast, and they barely even look at anything else. It's got a much thicker shell, it is beach grown, and it's gonna have a very classic East Coast flavor. Very, very briny. Uh, not quite as briny as some of the Virginia oysters that are over here. Next up, we have a Virginica oyster, which is actually the same species as the Blue Point, but these are actually farm-raised in uh, Washington State. And we get those to our supplier, Glenn Schreiber. Um, that's gonna be a little bit creamier than a normal oyster from the, the East Coast, but still gonna exhibit the East Coast qualities. Okay, the next one we're looking at is from Virginia. It's a um, mid-Atlantic mid oyster. It's gonna be very salty, and it's gonna have, uh, again, your classic Blue Point taste profile. It is an estuarial uh, oyster, so it's gonna have a little bit of that fruitiness to it. The next, next item are, these are from Long Island Sound, actually grown wild on the Connecticut shore. You can see the pretty little edge here. It's kind of got the flutes for support, so it probably was grown in some fairly uh, rough waters. Uh, they're gonna have a, let me see here, firm texture and salty meat. The next two are our house oyster here at Blue Water. We've got the Hammersley Coves, and that's, those are grown up in the, the Tacoma, Washington, Puget Sound area. And those are a classic Gygus oyster, press out shirt Gygus, from the West Coast, native to the West Coast. And then the Kumamoto oyster, which is farm raised in Washington, but the original oyster itself came from uh, Japan. So that's a different species of oyster altogether. So really we're looking at three different species of oysters here. We're having the Crassostria japonica from Japan. We have the Crassostria virginica, three ways from, from back east. And then we have the Crassostria gigas, which is the ice oyster that's native to the west coast. So, are they good? Do you like them? Fabulous. What's your I like the first one best. Everything has a specific flavor, and of course it's dependent on the water that it's, that it's grown in. So that is a very delicate difference, and each, each one has its own particular flavor. It's really very subtle, very nice. Well, that's it for this episode of Blue Water TV. Aye, aye, and goodbye.